Thanks for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Manan Goyal. I am a product go-to-market leader with the Amazon Redshift team here at AWS. In today's session, we'll be talking about automation in Amazon Redshift serverless. So without further delay, let's get started. Uh, so today specifically, uh, we'll talk about how Amazon Redshift Serverless uses capabilities uh, like automation and intelligent compute to make it easy and scalable for you to get started with your data warehouses. Amazon Redshift uh, is a fully managed cloud data warehouse uh, that accelerates your time to insights with fast, easy, and scalable uh, cloud data warehousing at scale. Tens of thousands of customers today use Amazon Redshift to analyze uh, terabytes to petabytes of data, uh, quickly find insights in that data and drive business decisions from that. Uh, Redshift gives you the ability to go across data sitting in transactional databases, S3 data lakes, data warehouses, and even third-party data stores. Uh, analyze that data, find real-time insights in it, run predictive analytics on that data, uh, and then make these insights available with the right price performance. Uh, Redshift uh, gives you price performance, which is up to three times better than any of the other cloud data warehouses. It also gives you the ease of use to uh, make these uh, make data warehousing really easy. Now, Redshift today gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to managing your data warehouse clusters. So it gives you the ability to pick the right instance types, the number of nodes, depending upon the compute uh, and uh, processing capabilities you want. It gives you capabilities like manual or automatic workload management to allocate right resources for your workloads. It also gives you the ability to scale your data warehouses depending upon uh, the workloads. So you can scale up or scale out using features like concurrency scaling or going to uh, larger size uh, instances uh, to manage your workloads. And it gives you all of these capabilities with the right price performance. So we offer cap features like pause and resume, which enable you to pause your compute and not pay for it when, when the data warehouse is not getting used. Uh, while uh, Redshift offers uh, really phenomenal capabilities for customers and customers really love it, uh, they've also been telling us that uh, Specifically, when it comes to ease of use, uh, they're looking to uh, enable more uh, users with data warehousing, and they're asking for more capabilities in that area. So what customers are telling us is, uh, you know, although uh, data warehouse management uh, is the forte or core competency of uh, database administrators, what customers are seeing is that they want to extend analytics and data warehousing to a much broader uh, user persona within their organizations. Uh, they want more ease of use capabilities in uh, Redshift. So uh, even non-technical users, such as business analysts, developers, um, data scientists can run and manage data warehouses. The other thing that customers are also want, uh, asking us for is um, automation and intelligent compute capabilities to manage unpredictable or varying workloads. Uh, customers are telling us that they're seeing a lot of scenarios where you know, certain dashboarding workloads, for example, can have you know, spiky usage uh, and, and you know, they want the system to be able to automatically scale up or down to manage those workloads. Uh, another thing customers tell us is that, you know, besides these ease of use and scalability features, they want to continue leverage uh, the existing capabilities that Redshift give them uh, in terms of the rich SQL capabilities and best in class performance. So essentially customers want, um, you know, these additional capabilities around ease of use and scalability, automatic scalability, without compromising on all the goodness of uh, Redshift around SQL capabilities and best in class performance. So that's where, uh, you know, recently we announced uh, Redshift serverless uh, in preview, uh, which is a really interesting capability in terms of uh, giving customers the ability to do uh, easy analytics for everyone. 
So I'm going to talk a little bit more about Amazon Redshift serverless, uh, but you know this is available in preview today, and you know specifically I want to focus on what capabilities Redshift provide, Redshift serverless provides uh, in terms of having you uh, quickly launch your data warehouses, run them, manage them, and scale the workloads. So specifically, uh, Redshift serverless provides four main capabilities. Uh, it gives you a simplified uh, user experience. So it really takes away the muck around uh, launching data warehouses. You don't have to worry about you know, picking the right instance types or number of nodes. Uh, it really simplifies the experience around launching data warehouses uh, by making it easy for you to launch the data warehouses. The second capability Redshift Serverless provides is uh, intelligent and dynamic compute where we monitor the serverless uh, deployment of Redshift, uh, monitors the query profiles, uses artificial intelligence algorithms on top of it to identify uh, how to provision the compute, how to manage the compute, how to scale it up or down all the way to zero if possible. Uh, the third capability Redshift serverless provides is you know, all the richness that customers have come to expect um, around Redshift with complex uh, joins and materialized views and be able, being able to go through, uh, go through S3 data lakes and run queries against the S3 data lakes as well as databases and other, other things like that. And finally, uh, pay for use. So Redshift gives you all these ease of use capabilities uh, without uh, you having to pay extra for it. Uh, the compute of Redshift serverless uh, scales, uh, it can scale up and scale down all the way to zero. So when the data warehouse is not getting used, you don't have to pay for anything. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So let's uh, drill down deeper into each of these capabilities and talk about how uh, Redshift serverless uses automation, uh, dynamic, intelligent compute to really simplify the end-to-end -end data warehousing experience uh, for you. So starting with the simplified uh, end-user experience, uh, Redshift Serverless really makes it easy for you to get started with your data warehouses. So no longer you, know, you need uh, uh, experienced database administrators to launch and manage and run your data warehouses. With Redshift Serverless, the experience is pretty easy. You simply go to your console, uh, you can launch a serverless endpoint, you can select the defaults, and within a few clicks, you have a Redshift serverless cluster, uh, instance up and running. Um, and you know, you can, uh, once the instance is up and running, you can use either the query editor tool that ships with Redshift serverless uh, to run queries against the data warehouse, or you can connect your BI and analytics tools uh, using ODBC, JDBC drivers, or a data API to connect to Redshift uh, serverless and run its query. So, you know, getting started with Redshift serverless is pretty easy. Uh, people, you know, who do not have data, database administration skills, you know, people who are uh, business analysts, data scientists, developers can get uh, started with it pretty quickly, take the defaults and you know you have your data warehouse up and running in, in a few clicks if you will. Uh, the second tenet of uh, Redshift serverless is the use of autonomics and intelligent compute uh, to automatically provision, uh, run and scale uh, compute for the data warehouse. So that's where uh, what Redshift Serverless does is it monitors your query patterns, your workloads, it applies you know, advanced uh, ML-based algorithms, machine learning-based algorithms on top of it, and, and, uh, and automatically decides you know, how much compute to provision for your data warehouse workloads, how to scale that uh, compute up or down, uh, and how to manage your data warehouses effectively to give you the right performance at the right price point. So a couple of capabilities that I'll highlight here is, you know, one thing um, that comes with Redshift serverless out of the box is um, automatic workload management, where uh, the, the, data, the serverless data warehouse monitors your queries, uh, identify the queries as small, medium, large, and allocates the right amount of uh, resources to process those queries efficiently. 
automatic scaling is also built into uh, serverless so uh, the data warehouse automatically scales up or down depending upon the query patterns the workloads the concurrency that is required of the data warehouse to help you meet uh, even the strict, the most strict uh, performance SLAs. It also uh, comes with automatic tuning and schema optimization. So you don't have to worry about how to uh, organize your data, how to distribute your data. Serverless uses capabilities like automatic table optimization out of the box to optimally design your table, pick the right distribution style, pick the right sort style for your tables. And, and give you performance and efficiency without you know worrying about manual tuning or you know having database administrators uh, look at uh, the workloads. And finally, uh, uh, Redshift Serverless is designed for pay for use. So uh, you know we monitor usage uh, of the data warehouse, and when there are no queries coming in, there are no workloads coming in. Uh, the the data the, the data warehouse goes on a pause state and automatically uh, restarts and starts uh, serving the request at, as requests come in. So pay for use is a key tenet of the data warehouse where uh, we are using intelligence automation to uh, pause the data warehouse as required and restart it when workloads come in. Uh, another thing that we have done with uh, Redshift Serverless uh, is also simplified uh, how we bill uh, customers for it and how customers pay for it. So uh, from, a, from a pricing perspective, there are two main things that customers pay as far as Redshift Serverless is concerned. Uh, there is compute and the storage cost. Uh, compute is ba uh, built on the basis of uh, normalized com uh, compute units. Uh, so there's a single uh, pricing unit for compute called Redshift uh, processing unit that we build customers on. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's built on RPO hours metered uh, on a per second basis, and all the data warehouse uh, compute, uh, whether it's the base data warehouse compute or accessing uh, S3 data lakes to run queries or scaling capacity up and down is normalized into this redshift processing unit, meaning customers don't have to worry about you know, different line items as far as compute is concerned. You know, they pay uh, based on the RPU usage as this you know, single unit, depending upon how much compute they're using. On the storage side, customers are charged uh, for gigabytes per month uh, storage rates. Um, and then they also have the ability to take, uh, to restore to you know, particular points and snapshots in 30 minutes interval um, over the last 24 hours. Now, um, Redshift Serverless gives customers a lot of uh, uh, control, a lot of ability to automatically scale workloads depending upon the query patterns. But we also realize that, you know, customers want to have uh, some guardrails built around the data warehouse as well. They want to make sure that you know uh, they get the right price performance, uh, and they can put you know upper limits or lower limits as far as the compute is concerned. So we give customers a number of options there. Uh, there are two main things that the customers can decide on. You know, one thing is uh, the RPU based units. So customers have the ability to. Uh, either pick automatic as the setting for the RPU based unit where the data warehouse automatically decides how much capacity to allocate as, as the base unit when it starts. Or customers, you know, they want uh, lower cost can start with, you know, setting of this RPU as 32 and increase it in increments of eight all the way to 512 units. Uh, the, the base RPU capacity determines how much resources are allocated to your data warehouse as it is running or it starts. So, you know, if you want better query performance, you know, our suggestion is to leave the setting as, uh, as auto or pick a higher setting for it. The other setting that we also provide in terms of cost control is the max RPU uh, units that can be set on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Uh, and this determines the, the amount of throughput that the system can provide. So if you're expecting a lot of concurrency, um, a number of queries running simultaneously, 
uh, it's advisable to set this uh, this this max RPO limit to a higher number. But this essentially controls you know what happens when the maximum RPO unit is used and uh, and system takes actions in terms of logging to system tables or other options to decide what to do in terms of managing your cost and performance. Now, the third key tenet of uh, uh, Redshift serverless is that it gives you all these uh, intelligent dynamic uh, compute uh, capabilities while maintaining all the goodness of uh, Redshift uh, in terms of the capabilities that it provides. So complex SQL anal analytics capabilities that Redshift is known for, uh, things like complex joins or the ability to run queries against uh, transactional databases or S3 data lakes, or the ability to uh, store and process semi-structured data uh, or capabilities like data sharing where you are able to uh, share data with other Redshift clusters within your organization, outside of your organization, without moving or copying data around are maintained with Redshift serverless. So you get all of those richness of Redshift in terms of complex uh, SQL processing, along with you know uh, dynamic compute, auto scaling, uh, paper use, and things like that with Redshift serverless. Uh, moving to Redshift serverless is also easy. So we have you know, used a lot of automation and uh, you know, dynamic capabilities to make it easier for customers to uh, migrate to Redshift serverless. Uh, it's a three-step process, pretty easy. Uh, if you're running a provision instance today, you can take a, uh, take a snapshot of your provision instance, uh, restore it as a, a serverless endpoint, and, uh, and uh, you know, change the endpoints for your applications uh, simply to the serverless endpoint and you're up and running. So basically, like, you know, if you're looking to migrate to Redshift serverless, pretty easy process, you know, take a snapshot from your uh, uh, provision instance, you restore it as uh, uh, a serverless instance, you change the endpoint of your uh, applications. And then if you have any monitoring scripts that were earlier using the provisioned Redshift API, you change those to use the serverless APIs. Uh, and it's a bi-directional process, so you can easily go from provision to serverless or serverless to provision uh, if you so desire. Um, we talked about, you know, like Redshift uh, serverless managing your uh, existing capabilities. So features like data sharing are supported with Redshift serverless. You know, it gives you an uh, uh, ability to uh, share your Redshift data across multiple Redshift clusters within your organization, even outside your organization, across accounts or across regions uh, without moving or copying data around. And, and you can have a hybrid architecture where you can have you know, some of your clusters as provision and other ones as uh, serverless depending upon the use case. So you know, if you have uh, a continuously running server uh, Redshift cluster like a ETL cluster, you can have that as a provision cluster. And you know, if you have sporadic usage clusters with variable usage, you know, they can be uh, you know, separated as data sharing consumer clusters reading through this uh, provide, uh, provider cluster and run queries on this, uh, this particular cluster. And then the final uh, tenet of Redshift serverless is pay for use, where uh, with Redshift serverless, you pay uh, only pay for compute only when you're using it. It's metered on a per second basis. So I have an example here where there are five different queries running on the data warehouse at, uh, at different point in times. Uh, and you can notice that, you know, like the query one, two, three are running at the same time uh, within a three minute window, there is some idleness and then query four runs for a minute uh, and 10 seconds at another time and query five runs for another uh, minute and 20 seconds uh, at another time. So there are, you know, number of idle times and you're not charged for any of that the usage time across the Redshift uh, serverless uh, instance is a total of five minutes, 30 seconds. So you, within a 15 minute duration, you're only charged for when you are using the compute. All right, so next uh, let's switch gears, talk about uh, some of the use cases of Redshift serverless. Let's talk about where, uh, where uh, we see customers using Redshift serverless. 
so the, the 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 first use case that I'll start with is you know easy analytics. As we said, with serverless, you know it's the easy button around uh, getting started with data warehousing. So you don't have to worry about you know picking what instance types, the number of nodes, and things like that. Um, you know, you simply go to your console, you pick the defaults, you can now, you have a, a serverless uh, data warehouse up and running in a few clicks, if you will. So, you know, a really good use case is, you know, when you have departmental users or, you know, your uh, uh, users like business analysts, data scientists, developers, who are probably not as uh, technically astute as uh, database administrators, you know, this serverless gives them a really good option to get started with data warehousing. Uh, they can quickly get started with data warehousing in a few clicks, uh, have it up and running. Um, it's also a really good use case for, uh, you know, sporadic workloads like dev and test environments and things like that. It, you only pay for uh, usage, you know, when you're using the instance. Uh, the second use case is around uh, variable workloads uh, where the system might be uh, idle for uh, some point in time and when uh, workloads come in uh, you know they might be varying quite a lot so in this case what happens is like you know if you are uh, if you are uh, deciding on how to provision your data warehouse uh, you might end up over provisioning or under provisioning depending upon you know how you uh, you know, what workloads you look at. So serverless gives you a really good option there because again, you don't pay for the time when you're not using the data warehouse. And secondly, the data warehouse automatically scales up and down. So when more capacity is needed, it will scale up to meet that demand. And when lesser capacity is needed, it can uh, shrink down all the way to zero. So you don't have to pay, uh, you know, for extra capacity. So this automatic uh, scaling up and down is a pretty good uh, application or feature here for managing workloads and that's where serverless works really well. Uh, the third use case is around periodic workloads, you know, let's say uh, end of month processing, end of quarter processing where your data warehouse is not getting used continuously. Uh, in those cases, you know, again with serverless, you don't pay for idle time, with, you know, no, no compute is happening. Your data warehouse goes in the pause state, and you're not paying for any of the compute. So it's a pretty good use case. Uh, you know, when periodic workloads are there. And finally, um, you know, it's also a really good use case when you have steady state usage across the data warehouse, but there's a lot of spikiness. You know, you have uh, you know extra queries, uh, a high number of concurrent users coming in or you know more data that you're processing on the data warehouse and you don't have you know good control on uh, when those kind of demands on the system will come in now because serverless has capabilities like auto scaling it can scale up and down without any user intervention it makes it easy for you to manage these kind of workloads not having to over provision or under provision and still get consistent performance at scale So that's uh, in terms of the use cases, uh, you know, coming back to serverless, uh, uh, you know, uh, hopefully you saw like, you know, we've done a lot of work around serverless. We are using a lot of automation, intelligent compute to make it easier for you to get started with data warehouses. Uh, first of all, like, you know, uh, we have really made it easy for you to get started with data warehouses with Redshift serverless. You do not have to pick up, you know, what instances to use, how many nodes to use, any of that. You know, you simply go to your console, you launch your data warehouse, and you know, it automatically scales up and down. It automatically adjusts capacity depending upon the use cases and things like that. So, you know, a really exciting feature in terms of getting quickly started with data warehouse and uh, even uh, uh, personas and users such as uh, business analysts. Uh, data scientists, uh, developers who may not have, you know, the detailed technical skills uh, like uh, database administrators can quickly get started with serverless, start taking advantage of uh, analytics at scale. It gives you all the Redshift SQL uh, and, and capabilities, you know, on the way from joins to, you know, running queries across data lakes to materialized views and stored procedures and things that you expect from Redshift. So, you get all the functionality with Redshift serverless. 
Uh, and things such as auto scaling, pay for use, no changes to your application, where you don't need to change any of your applications, make it really easy for you to get started with uh, serverless. Um, so, uh, you know, there are a number of uh, resources available around Redshift serverless. I point you to this particular uh, web page here. You know, we are also offering uh, some startup credits uh, for you to try out serverless. It's available in preview today. So I'll encourage all of you to uh, try out Redshift Serverless. You know, I, I uh, invite you to visit this page, uh, learn more about uh, Redshift Serverless. And if you're interested in learning more about, you know, how to take advantage of uh, credits to launch serverless instances, try it out. You know, we have a really nice blog that's available as well. So, you know, I, I visit, uh, I encourage the users to visit uh, this particular web page, learn more about serverless. And, how we are using automation and machine learning, intelligent compute to really scale the data warehouse workloads. With that, uh, that's the end of the presentation. So uh, I have my information here. If you have questions for me, you know uh, we can take a few questions right now. Uh, so I thank you all for uh, listening to the presentation, and uh, we'll open it up to questions now.